Merry Christmas everybody, once again we're back for the 5th edition of the Christmas Special Random Race. 50 minutes on the ice track and we've got floodlights this year. This video is brought to you by all the scumbags listed on the scumbags page of my website. Big thank you to everyone listed there for your long time and extra support. Yeah, I am not a fan of this starting position. We're so far back. Where's Locke? Oh my god! He doesn't need this advantage! God damn it! Mild in the chat saying, don't worry, I'll win from last. I mean, we'll see. But with Locke starting him first, I don't know. He might just have some really bad luck. He needs to get some really great cars, ironically. <laughs> so, we'll see how it goes. There we go, we're away. To be fair, Locke's been having a really bad run of things lately. He's a little bit washed at the moment. He's had some really bad results. So maybe he does need that advantage. <laughs> and he's running on two hours of sleep to try and to try and get into the race, so yeah, maybe he does need it. Oh, go. Oh, oh, it's happened already. It's happened already. Anyway, the 2023 edition of the Christmas special random all 50 minutes on the ice track and you might feel like there's a bit more grip than there normally is right now and that's because we're starting in the slam van which is normally notorious for not having very good grip and no brakes but say it with me now off-road traction loss <laughs> this is the race where if you play the off-road traction loss drinking game your liver will be destroyed good car to start with and then I've crashed into the god why do I say anything I'm just going to respawn I can't believe I've just done that and I've gone to the back I'm in last place good car to start with in the back it got caught on the inside of the the prop the big wheels of it I'm in friggin' 30 second. I've lost like seven. I mean, I was I was mid pack in a car with good off road traction loss for this track. God damn it! Well, excellent start. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. I'll, I'll say it once. I won't say it again. Apart from... I mean, to be fair, people always talk about me saying off-road traction loss too much in these races, but sometimes I need to say it because the vehicle just has a good off-road traction loss. So I need to say, oh, nice, this car's got a good off-road traction loss. I'm not necessarily explaining it again. <laughs> but I will explain it once. Off-road traction loss determines how grippy a car is off-road. Most cars go from 0 to 1. 1 is normal for most cars. But it also determines how grippy a car is on this ice special ice track props. So cars with good off-road traction loss, which is 0, basically. Like the slam van that we just had, or that Sand King. Will do, do, do relatively a lot better, because they'll be a lot more grippy on this ice track than a regular car. And then there's some cars that have an off-road traction loss higher than one on Project Homecoming, like, you know, race cars uh, that have levels of, like, two or higher or something that are absolutely horrendous. But then we've also got drift spec cars like this, which are also a nightmare, as Locke laps me by the time I've gotten round lap three in the lead. Excellent start to this race. All right, how many times did I say it? Am I on 10? <laughs> Four minutes into the race and I've already said it 10 times. Well, that's that's the last. No! I need more on the front. I need more on the front. There we go. Thank you. Oh, and then I've gone this way. God damn it, I can't get going again. Screw hey, it. you bitch. Screw it. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, now I'm going. 
Okay, that did not go as I would have liked. Another good car. So I've had... Out of my... Out of my three cars... And well, I suppose it's still... It's not the grippiest, actually. I'm like, I'm still in last place. I'm in, th I'm still in 32nd. Out of my, out of my, um, three, first three random cars, the two of them have actually been pretty decent with the Sand King and this. Have not maximized the cars that I've had so far. Not last! <laughs> Instigator. Again, I'm getting some good cars for the track. This one's going to be a little, div little bit more difficult to overtake people with, though, I think. Around the outside. Beautiful. <laughs> the drift, to be fair, the drift spec kind of cancelled out the goodness of some of the cars that I've had so far. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a that must be the best car to have in this race, the AC Sport. It has to be. Alright, here we go. We got a long way to go. We still got 43 minutes of this race to go. No! No! I gotta say it again. The Jester is notorious for being really bad with the off road traction loss. Its off road traction loss is. Is it 1.4? I thought it was 1.2. For. I, I've got to say it. See, this is it. I'm not explaining off-road traction loss now. I just need to talk about it because it's pertinent to the car and what I'm doing right now. But the Jester and the Jester race car, for whatever reason, are the only cars in Vanilla GT Online that have a higher off-road traction loss than one. Most of the sports cars are just one, but the Jester and the Jester race car are even worse. I'm... I'm having a bad time. I'm having a real bad time. There's no other way to sort to say it. I'm getting good cars, but I'm I'm getting bad cars as much as I'm getting good cars in this race. <laughs> okay, Locke's not in the lead anymore. At least something's going well. <laughs> Still washed. No way. I've had the Regina 6x6 and now I've got the Regina 4x4. I'm just going from, like, really good car to have to absolutely worst car to have. Off-road to drift to off-road to... Um, high off-road traction loss Jester to off-road again. Overtaking is the problem when you're in a better car. That's my fault. I'm gonna. They're both so slow, and I can go so much faster. Saddler Sport. Finally, a normal vehicle. This is the first one of the entire race where it's been somewhat normal. It hasn't been absolutely great or absolutely terrible like all the other cars. Oh, I can take a break, take a rest. Got my Christmas jumper on specifically. My, my, my Snoopy Christmas jumper. Can't get back up. 
I'm sure this uh, Christmas jumpers is just chilling or something like that. I am very much, I have not been chilling in this race. I was not cheating. Did you not notice how I went off the track in front of that car and then made sure that I came back on the track behind it? So that I didn't gain an advantage from being on the more grippy stuff on the outside. Pay attention, chat. The rules said same place you left. Now, I also said in the rules, as long as you don't gain an advantage, you'll be fine. Again, pay attention. Listen. <laughs> this is not the Christmassy spirit today. <laughs> the start of this race has gone so poorly. <laughs> It feels it's anarchy this Christmas, it is. This was a decent little lap though. Windsor did good. <laughs> Alright, I'm in 24th. I'm up into the top three quarters. But I'm a lap down from most people. Yeah, that have an arrow. This Rano's flying. Almost said have an arrow. Back out of the top, top seventy-five percent again. I feel like I want to say that these races over the years. I love that this is a Christmas tradition now, by the way. But I can't believe we've done five years of it. Feels like only yesterday we were doing this for the first time. Um, I, I want to say that they've gone like sequentially bad and good for me, these races. I can't, I, I can't remember all the results that I've had from the last five years, but it's usually I'll have a good race, then the next year I'll have a bad race, then the next year I'll have a good race. And I guess it's, it's bad race year this year. <laughs> Only in this race can an Acer be battling a Turismo or Baggio and pass it for position. <laughs> okay, locks down to fifth now, so if he wins from here, we can't say that it was all because of his starting position. God damn it. All right, Brutus. Oh, now we're talking. Oh, this feels grippy. Oh, he's no way. No way he's ended up in an open wheeler. He's having such a bad time lately. <laughs> Poor Locke. No way. I did say that earlier. Oh, there's a few open. Oh, we've had. This is the lap of race cars. Look at this. Open wheelers and GT cars and formula cars and Yeah, this this is the lap where it's all started to kick off <laughs> I shouldn't laugh really should I cuz karma and all that Yeah, I don't know how I got away with that in the Brutus. Oh number FF rally another good one See I've had some good cars in this if I'd started a bit further up, or I hadn't had such a bad start.
Could have been doing well. Look at the grip that you've got when you've got a ruddy car. This is beautiful. Look at this. This has got to be my best lap, surely. Locke's still trying to finish his lap in the open wheeler. <laughs> Oh, the Patriot Classics good feels grippy as well, even though it's slow. 41 seconds, that was easily my best lap. I'm nearly in the top half. Look at that grip! The acceleration! I almost feel like I've had good off-road traction loss cars in this race on more laps than I've had bad cars. It's just the bad cars have been particularly bad and I didn't maximise the good cars I'm in the top half <laughs> no you absolute do you know what this isn't too bad this isn't too bad this isn't too bad it's still grippy it's still grippy it's still grippy at least it's not the regular tractor, it's the quick version. And this must have a good off-road traction loss. No, look at Locke! <laughs> He's having the... I'm about to overtake him for position! <laughs> He's the hot ring weevil, no way! And I'm overtaking him in a Fieldmaster Classic V8! After he started pole position! <laughs> oh man, he really is suffering lately. It's so grippy! This, this field master, this is what I mean, off-road traction loss dominates everything, doesn't matter how quick the car is normally. <laughs> hey, the Novak again! <laughs> I just keep getting good cars! What is this? This is, unbe this is an unbelievable run of cars, this. I don't think the off-road traction loss of the Novak is a full zero, but it's it's better than normal. I don't think I've ever had a run as good as this in any of these five random Christmas random alls that we've done. This has been ridiculous. <laughs> oh, poor luck. <laughs> I think that might have helped him a little bit, possibly. Got him facing in the right direction eventually. Alright, we're finally back to a normal car. As electric toaster's going backwards. <laughs> is this for top 10? Was that for top 10? As Phoenix is going... Spinning around. I'm in the top 10! No way! Novak has 0.8 off-road traction loss. Oh, wow, okay. So it doesn't take much to make it feel grippy then. All-wheel drive probably helped with it as well. What a turnaround the last few laps have been. We've still got half... We're not even halfway through the race yet. <laughs> you just never know with this race what's going to happen. There's a reason it's become a tradition for the Christmas special. That was a great run. I've, I've never had a run of cars that good in these Christmas races before. That was something else, that. I can't believe we've still got 32 minutes left. It feels like we've done the whole race at this point. Oh god, there's cars everywhere. There's... Oh, Verlith in the lead, but is in a an LMP car. There's 8th. It seems like the leaders keep getting the bad car. Like, the leaders change so much in this race. So far. 
Oh, there it is. There it is. It's too good to be true. What's the OTL of this then? On Project Homecoming. They normally put it to two, I think, these days, right? With the the prototypes and stuff. One? Really? It doesn't feel like one. I know it's one in vanilla GTA, but I'm pretty sure Project Homecoming increase around two. Yeah, I thought so. It says 1.5 on the website. Okay. Well, that's that's very much enough. Oh, what was it for the Karuma? Uh, the Karuma. The, the Jester. Can someone look it up? What it is in vanilla GTA. Is it 1.2 or 1.4? One point four. Wow. Bigger than I thought it was actually. I thought it was one point two. I wonder why they did that. So I've had two cars now with an off-road traction loss higher than one. And a drift car. But I've had a lot of cars that have been very good. So I can't really complain too much. That wasn't too bad. That's amazing, that last lap was 30, 1 minute 38 seconds. And my my best lap is 41 seconds. That was almost a minute slower. That's the differences you can get on this track. It's crazy. You just never... Like, no idea. Someone who's in the lead right now could end up finishing in 20th by the end of the race. Ninth, still in the top ten after that great run. Darkness is starting to set in as we come midway through the race. We're almost halfway through. I'm getting some normal cars now. <laughs> Just sliding out <laughs> to the outside of the track. And the, the, the difference between cars that have got good traction and normal cars is just crazy. When you see that SUV, truck, whatever it was, Jeep, just launch ahead. It's absolutely, like, it's just such a difference. So is seventh the highest I got to in the race, in that great run? Was it seventh? The lowest I've been is 32nd after laps 1 and 2. But like at this point, anything can happen. I could end up back in 32nd just as much as I could end up in the lead by the end. And as you might notice, we've got floodlights. So, one of the problems that we've had over the last four years, well, there's a prototype in front, LMP3. Pass that in my manana, no problem. <laughs> Is that a drift, drift tamper as well? Coming through in my, in my manana. Get out of the way for the sheer speed. <laughs> no. We're all right. No, we're not all right. We're all right. We're good. We're good. Saved it. Yeah. So one of the um, one of the problems that we've had over the last few years of doing this race is that when it gets to nighttime, um, 
because the track is located kind of way off the map, there's no natural lighting, so the cars get really dark. Um, Alright, June's gonna be good. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, so yeah, for a long time I've wanted... Oh. For a long time I've wanted floodlights on uh, on this track. Um, and we finally got them sorted this year, thanks to MTK for sorting it out for us. Floodlights have been added, so at least in certain parts of the track we will get some lighting on the cars and it won't just be a dark blob for the majority of the nighttime running. That wasn't the uh, the greatest lap that I could have had in the June, but this Sultan Classic is bloody grippy as well. <laughs> oh my god, I always got wiped out. Around the outside, just driving around everybody. There's seventh. Back to the highest I've been. <laughs> yes, giving me the thing. <laughs> That's a jester. Oh, I know that pain. Entity 2 1. Oh, they've gone straight on. <laughs> Is this the first supercar I've had in this race? In terms of just normal, soup, bog standard supercar. The floodlights really make this look great. They don't cover every single part of the track, which I think is fine, but they give us areas where, as we drive through, we will see the car properly. And certainly inside the cave, it looks really great with all those lights. It's just what we needed for this track. And the Sultan, oh, and now we're back in a drift spec, damn it. Um, the Sultan Classic that we just had was really good. Still not my best lap, though. 41 seconds still stands. I can't remember what I was in now. See, that's the thing with this, uh, this race. Drift cars aren't even the worst cars you can get. Ordinarily they would be, but like they're just they're not that bad. They still just handle like a normal drift car in a normal race, really. There's much, much worse that you can get in this. Drift cars are yeah, they're in the natural habitat, that's true. Big drift. Like, it's still a slow lap, obviously, but it's less slow relative to, you know, normal cars than it would be otherwise. Yeah, the snowman's gone. Alright, Voodoo Custom. This is going to be a slow lap. We've had some slow laps late. Seventh remains the highest I've been. A mini dump the Vedlith's in in the lead is launching ahead. I'm two laps down off the leaders at the moment. I think that was Vedlith putting a second lap on me. It shows the difference. We've got massive field spread. Yeah, mild in second after starting last. He's he's doing what he said he was going to do in the chat. <laughs> no, I was just wondering where Locke was, was and how he was doing. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, it just goes from bad to worse, doesn't it? You're giving me the finger as I go past. <laughs> oh, poor luck. He's had two hours of sleep for this. <laughs> he's still inside the top 20 though. So at least he's got that. Me and Locke both have tractors in this race, and but I got the good one and he got the unlucky one. <laughs> He's been very unlucky this race. Oh, there's Verdlith now. I've got I've got I'm one lap down now. That's what I mean, it can change so quickly with the cars. Oh, what a scumbag! Side. Buffalo STX has good base grip. Seminole Frontier. Oh, this feels good. This feels grippy. I can work with this. On the outside. Beautiful. Uh, should I? I don't know whether I should have gone around the outside there, but I did it. It's difficult to know what to do. Do you go inside? Do you go outside? Look at the overtakes. Oh, Verdlith can't make it up the hill. No way. The lead is eroding. What a great lap this has been. Close to my best. It's going to be 40 seconds. Seminole Frontier was great. Tour bus, not so much. Slow, round we go. A rare moment of peace and quiet in this race for the last couple of seconds. I feel like the slow cars are a, a double edged sword. Like, they're not, they're not too bad, really. Like, yeah, they're super slow, but, you know, you, you're going to get around eventually, and it's not going to be too painful. It was a good attempt in the Drag King to try and make that happen. Yeah, there's not enough power to break traction. Oh, my God, RBS. What? <laughs> um... That's that's not gone well. <laughs> what is he in? I don't even know what he's in. Or is he just... Because there's other people who have been having prototypes but haven't been acting like that. Is he just doing it for the lols? RS1. That's the new LMDH car, right? The GTP. Sandstorm, I think. It doesn't have, like, some ridiculous off-road traction loss, does it? Over and above normal stuff. Because I remember the first year that we did this, all the off-road... Uh, the off-road... The open wheelers had off-road traction losses of, like, 3.5 or whatever, and you just literally couldn't get them around the track. I think they changed that for future future races. They don't go that high anymore. Okay, this is not good. Okay, this this is this is not good. This is really not good.
this is going to be a challenging lap. This might be the least grip I've had in air of any car so far. God damn it. What is this rancher stock car? And straight off again. <laughs> you just can't stay. You can't stay on the track. Checkpoint bollocks. Thank you for telling me. I had I had totally missed it. Oh, this is this is this is undoing all the good work over the last half an hour. Do I do this every race? Every. Whoever went into the back of me needs to wait for both of us. I didn't see who it was. Yeah, this is this is undone everything. Uh, I do this every year, right? Don't I miss a checkpoint in every single one of these races at some point? It feels like I do anyway. Oh, Locke's overtaken me for position now. All that good work completely undone in one lap. That's how it can change, though. That's it. I've gone from, what, 7th to 17th. I know I was in, like, 8th or something when I actually got that car, but... I've, I've got to... My goal now has to be to get back into the top 10. I'm not winning this race at this point. Yeah, that should have been a weird from Phoenix, but I mean, they didn't get called out, so it is what it is. Should have been a weird for whoever went into the back of the two of us earlier on, but... see who it was. Shouldn't require call-outs to make it work, but hey. Alright, the prairie. Back to something slow but reliable at least. Got about a quarter of the race left. Fedlith, not even in the top five anymore. He's in tenth. He wasn't. That's what I mean. That's how quick this can change. Fedlith went from the lead to tenth in the space of like a lap. I gone from what eighth to four seventeenth or whatever it was in the space of a lap. You just. You just never know. You think you saw the one who took me out respawned behind me? Oh, okay, so they, they may have just respawned as well. I see. Yeah, that's true. If I didn't see them wait, maybe they, it's because they respawned themselves. How many laps down am I now? I'll wait until I cross the line here. Alright, the Boer. I can't really tell. There's too much going on. I need to maximise this this car. That Weevil looks like a big handful. It seems like it's one of the worst cars to get. And whatever that is that people have been getting that Dinmite's in now, that Verdleth was in earlier. Zodiac LM. That's one of the worst that we've seen. Ugh. 
Oh, what a scumbag! All right, 15th, mid-pack. Don't tell me after all of this. After all of this. Oh, the new cork head dice. I won my first ever race in this car in the snow. Ice is a bit of a different prospect, but... <laughs> Turn me around, but put me right. <laughs> On my birthday, no less, I won in this car. Yeah, that weevil is really bad. Wait, that's not that same dinmite in that Zodiac still, is it? It is! Wow! The Zodiac and the weevil are the two worst. I don't know which weevil it was exactly, but it's like one of the weevil variations. Dinmite was up there as well in the top five before that. So I'm like, I think I'm three laps down now from the leaders. So the win has kind of gone. I needed to get a few more decent off-road traction loss vehicles rather than getting that rancher stock car, I think, to have any chance at, at pushing on to try and push for the win after this. So after all this, I would very much like to not have a bog standard mid-pack finish. Although averaging out everything that I've done from the very back to the front, I guess that makes sense, but it would be nice to get back into the top 10. That's got to be the goal at this point. Not that I can really control it. <laughs> this is my third drift car. Okay, eight minutes left. Oh, no. Oh, I saw this drifting around earlier in the race as well. Oh, no, the top ten's gone. Already it's gone. <laughs> And now I'm back behind lock. I love that. I love that about this race. Well, at least, yeah, it's at least it's a Ron car. We've had our Ron car. For, is this the first one? No, I can't be sure. But at least I can enjoy the livery. <laughs> um, that's what I love about this race. The swings. The swings are just insane. I think there's no other random race we do where the, the this, there's such big swings of performance and position through the race. You can go from first to last in two laps, like without get and and consistently as well. It's not as if you have to get a dozer for that to happen. There's a lot of cars where that can happen, and the same going back up through the order as well. Outside the top 20 now. Well, no, I'm still just in the top 20, I guess. Jero ZX. muscle car in HSW form but only because of its top speed it does not have good grip under normal circumstances but at least it's a normal car rather be in a brawler no doubt about it
I'm not seeing anybody really who I'm fighting for position. Everyone who I'm seeing on the track, I'm either a lap down from or more, or a lap ahead of or more. The, the field spread must be huge. Now this is nice and slow, but also not very grippy either, so I'm not I'm not catching up that race truck in front. Oh wait, is it got is it is the race truck really bad? It's possible. I'm sure Michael in that race truck, he was in the lead at one point during this race early on. And now down in about to be 21st if I can get the overtake made. The swings, man. Yeah. Up the inside in the Emperor. Bloody hell. That flies, whatever that is. <laughs> Just people sliding all over the place. Ah, oh, this race. Hopefully it's been an enjoyable video for your Christmas Day fun. Whether you're watching on Christmas Day 2023 or not. Whether you celebrate Christmas or not. It's hopefully an enjoyable race that we do every year. Oh god. Oh god! <laughs> and I hope you all continue to enjoy Thank you for another year of supporting. We got one more random race of the year. But this is the one that everybody always looks forward to. Can't believe we've been doing this for five years now. Hey, I'm in the. the I'm. I'm not in. I don't have twenty by my uh, position. Nineteenth. <laughs> Catching up to two in front. This is for position. Three minutes left. Oh, it's carnage. It's carnage. It's absolute carnage. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a park ranger on the next lap. Habanero roll. Of course. Of course it is. <laughs> All right. Got to be careful. Gotta be careful. Do you know what? The Hubbard Air Roll feels like it drives a lot more normally right now. Is it? I mean, it feels very grippy. Like, I'm, I am I know how to drive the Hubbard Air Roll these days to not flip it, but it feels like the inputs that I'm doing on a normal track would have flipped it by now. Look at this! The go habanero roll! The first time anyone's ever overtaken anything in a habanero roll. <laughs> what a lap from the habanero roll! Oh, insurgents grippy as well. We're having a last gasp race comeback. I'm 26 seconds behind 16th place. The gaps are too big. The gaps are way too big. On the inside. Doing a last gasp charge up the order. Never mind. That's my bad, I should have respawned. God damn it, I'm so frustrated. Never mind. The last gasp charge of the order has failed. <laughs> uh, it was it was a nice idea. I'm back in a Glendale, so it wasn't good, it wasn't going to amount to anything anyway.
Yeah, it's probably how it is with the habanero roll. It's so grippy on dry road and that's what causes it to flip. But on the ice track, that actually helps the grip. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I still could have flipped it, but it would have been a lot more difficult to do. Like proper wrenching on the steering at high speed. This could be my last car, depending on where the leader is. There is the leader. This is going to be my last car. This is it. This is the end of the race. The Glendale. Oh, I'm just going to get overtaken for 18th on the last corner. Kete takes the win. And here it is. 18th. So it was, in the end, a bog-standard mid-pack finish. <laughs> After all that, from from being in last place at the start, well, standing at the back of the grid, to being in last place after the first two laps, to being up into seventh place at the highest at one point, and then ending up in 18th, as I float to the bottom of the sea. Merry Christmas, everybody. What a race once again. So there's your finishing order. Mild was very close to doing what he said in the chat at the start of the race, going from last to first. But uh, he was actually a full lap down from the leader. The leader was an entire lap ahead of everybody else. Locke still managed to scrape into 12th, six places ahead of me. Damn, it just so many ups and downs I, I saw so many people who were high up and then finishing low down and then people who were low down and then they finished high up it's just the nature of this race 36 laps for last place 49 for the leader 13 lap difference in 50 minutes that's crazy off-road traction loss count about 24 that's not as not too bad i feel like i've done i've done worse i've said it many more times in previous races Poor Locke. Locke's still on his bad run. Good recovery to get back to 12th, though. <laughs> After starting in pole position, I bet everyone thought it was over immediately, but that's the beauty of this race. You never know. I feel a little bit less bad about the start of my race. I think even if I'd actually executed those first off, uh, good off-road traction loss cars that I got in those first few laps well, I wouldn't have got many more positions than what I've got maybe... 16th instead or something but I was entire lap down of 15th so it's just how these races go we'll be back next year to do it all over again <laughs>